and let's not use the obfuscating language that is used in this area. It's not a chest binder. Okay. Boys don't use it. It's, it's girls. It's used to compress the breasts, to flatten them so that, boy, that girls resemble boys. Um, and it has all sorts of health risks. See, the Charity Commission is assessing a transgender ch children's charity for sending breast binders to young girls without their parents' permission. It's one of those sentences you probably wouldn't have imagined saying 10 years ago, but is there it is nonetheless. Mermaids have defended that action, saying providing breast binders with safety guidelines is less harmful for children experiencing body dysphoria than other methods. Several health experts and other transgender activists are condemning the practice as unhealthy. This includes Stephanie davis Arai, the founder and director of the advocacy group Transgender Trend. Uh, good morning to you, Stephanie. Good morning. Uh, what's going on here, here then? Uh, the Charity Commission is concerned about this. It's just looking at it at the moment. Um, what is a chest binding? What does it mean? What is it? How does it work? It compresses the breasts. So it's a breast binder. And, and let's not use the obfuscating language that is used in this area. It's not a chest binder. Okay. Boys don't use it. It's, it's girls. It's used to compress the breasts, to flatten them so that, boy, that girls resemble boys. Um, and it has all sorts of health risks. Apart from anything else, it, it prevents a girl from breathing properly. So girls can't be active. And we know, I mean, this is a real problem. At, at puberty, girls tend to stop being active anyway, stop taking part in sports because they become very self-conscious about their bodies, about their developing bodies. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of girls have... Um, big problems with their breasts, a lot of body hatred at puberty because they're developing um, in very visible ways and they get a lot of um, um, uh, attention for that right. development, which can be very uncomfortable, it can be frightening. Um, girls' bodies develop into a, a woman's body before a girl may be um, emotionally and psychologically mature enough to deal with the attention that that then generate some of it really inappropriate and frightening attention. And that also happens in, in, in schools with teasing by boys or comments yeah. by boys or groping. So all of those sort of teenage girl problems are now solved by this idea that if they don't enjoy it, they're not real girls, they must be boys, and here's the solution. But of course, it damages breast tissue it can damage the lungs, the ribs, the back, yeah. and even lead to heart attacks. It's a really serious thing. To, uh, you know, it's a form of self-harm. Is, is there a problem here that uh, there'll be a very small percentage, very, very, very small percentage of people, even at the age of 14, 15, who are experiencing gender dysphoria to a very pronounced extent who require all sorts of emotional and psychological support? But there'll be a spectrum then of girls, we've just talked about a teenage girl myself, who are regarding their identities in a very fluid way, they're regarding their sexualities in a very fluid way, and they're experimenting with things and how they look and how they regard themselves and what pronouns to use. All that stuff goes on. But that, that on, the, on the very, very broad spectrum, there's people doing that, and there might be a tiny, tiny number who require different support, not, not breast binding, but other forms of support. Have we set up ourselves in this country in a way that can deal with those who need sort of clinical support and those who are just sort of teenagers experimenting? I think that, that to me is a, I think lots of people with teenagers will know that this idea of fluidity is, is very common. Uh, Stephanie, did you hear what I was saying? Yes. Yeah, go, go, what, what would you say? Um, we're not dealing with the issue properly, or we haven't been. I think with the Hillary Cass review, now Hillary Cass was commissioned by the NHS to do an independent review of the Tavistock and found that the, basically the service that's been provided hasn't been safe for children. And the reason is partly because of these groups like mermaids. Um, a lot of these girls and, and boys um, are on the autism spectrum, come from care homes, have very chaotic backgrounds, have um, pre-existing mental health issues. Um, a huge, the majority are gay or lesbian. So we have to look at, are, are we, is this a new form of gay conversion therapy that we're telling children they're born in the wrong body? We have to understand that, that children, that this generation of children are bombarded with information online, that if they have what are actually the typical problems yeah. of adolescence, of body hatred and rejection, and all sorts of problems that, that adolescence brings, um, are indication that they're transgender, which means that a girl is really a boy. And charities like Mermaids promote the idea that, they, that these girls should be immediately affirmed as boys yeah. and set on this pathway 
which will in all likelihood lead to medical intervention. Yeah, because that, it's very difficult to come back once you start on that pathway. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that level of decisiveness is, is clearly troubling to an awful lot of people. Stephanie, good to speak to you. Thank you for joining us today. That's Stephanie Davis Arrow. And there's, there's also this uh, statistic, Asma, that mm. uh, it's, 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 it's a. 